Hello, everyone, and welcome to our ongoing or the first of our ongoing series of Ask the Bron Color Assistant. Uh, my name is Blake Griffin. I am the brand manager here for Bron Color in the U.S. Uh, we are very, very, very happy to have all of you guys in the audience today, and we appreciate you taking some time to uh, to come see us. Today, we're going to be talking about selecting and assembling a softbox. I um, want to go ahead and say that uh, if you have any questions during our webinar today, please feel free to use the Q&A tab at the top of your uh, screen there. Ask your questions there, and we will be happy to, uh, to get those answers for you. Uh, of course, we're going to be answering those questions live as well as we do have a bunch of folks from Braun Color here in the audience today as well that will be making those answers for you. In the unlikely event that we don't get a chance to answer your question, do not fret. Please follow us at uh, Braun Color USA on all forms of social media, and we are happy to uh, get you going from there. Uh, another piece to please be aware of is that there is about a 30 second delay. So from when we are talking, when you're asking your questions, it may take a little bit for us to go ahead and uh, get those answered for you, but I guarantee we'll do that. And then also, please be aware that uh, during the uh, show and tell portion of our webinar today, uh, we will be using Flash. However, you may not see it on the, the webinar itself. Things get a little bit funny when we're uh, transmitting over the internet. So. Without further ado, I would like to introduce today the Braun Color Assistant, Galvin Collins. Galvin is a photographer and cinematographer working in Portland, Oregon, and he spent over 10 years splitting his time as a still assistant and first assistant camera. As a still assistant, he has helped bring photographers' visions to life, and as a first AC, he has helped keep the picture sharp. So without further ado, everybody, Galvin Collins. Hello, everybody. Uh, Blake, thank you for the great introduction there. Uh, as Blake said, for about 12 years, I was a regular camera assistant here in the great area of Portland, Oregon, traveling all over. And in that time, we primarily use Braun Color. So it is absolutely my pleasure to be a representative of Braun Color today. Um, as Blake said, also uh, welcome and any questions, please throw those in the chat. That helps guide uh, what we tell you all about. Uh, so let's just get right into it. Let's uh, jump in and start talking about soft boxes. Uh, to understand what a soft box is all about, let's talk about hard light versus soft light. Hard light generally being light direct from the source, uh, which can generally be harsher, uh, create sharper shadows, and generally hot spots and highlights. Uh, soft light being the opposite of that, which is diffused soft light that spreads. Uh, that softens shadows and softens generally your subject matter and reduces the amount of highlight area that is more kind of garish, I guess. Uh, so let's jump right into the anatomy of a softbox. This is uh, the best way to do that is let's just start building one up here. I've got a Braun Color 60 by 100 softbox right here that we are going to build. And let's start out by talking about your speed ring. Arguably, this is the most important part of the softbox. If you do not have this, you do not have a monitor, or sorry, you don't have a modifier. If you do not have the right one for your light, you don't have a modifier. So it is very important, especially in a rental situation, to make sure that you get your speed rings and you get the right speed rings for your modifiers. Bron color here. Um, when it comes down to what a soft box is, it's essentially a structure that has a reflective material in there that bounces the light around, puts it through diffusion, and softens the light. Are all soft boxes created equal? I don't think so. I've used a lot of them throughout the course of my career, and um, consistency is the name of the game. You'd like to have light be even in a gradient. It's usually less light on the outside, more in the middle less on the outside, and you want that to be as even a gradient as possible. Uh, Braun Color is very specific and purposeful when they build their soft boxes. The, arcs, uh, the arc or the parabolic shape of the rods is intentional, and in their speed ring, they carry that same purposefulness into the reflective material that comes in beneath the globe. Uh, this is a just a, a, a direct way of showing how much they care about all of the light that that light, that, that strobe head can produce. Uh, the speed rings for Braun Color have a nice color-coded system on them there. So red for red, blue for blue. We are going to be using the 60 by 100, which has uh, dropped stuff now. 
<laughs> yeah, we're live, which is red coded there. So we know exactly where we're going to put that on the speed ring. So let's get started doing that. Rods are the are very important. They are the structure of your softbox. Uh, when you're renting or buying used or buying new, you always want to make sure that your rods are not bent. A little gentle curve is fine, but anything that changes that shape that I talked about, that purposeful structure, uh, is going to affect your overall consistency, as I talked about, of the soft light. So when you do rent, inspect to make sure that the rods aren't too bent, don't have kinks in them, or in any way makes that light not do the best that it can do. Uh, as we're using a strip bank, I like to organize it so I have a top on top there, and we are going to just go red to red, red to red. Usually the first few are easy to get all mounted up in there. I'm still on camera. But as you get to the last one, it can be a bit of a stress. So here's a tension tip for you that uh, I found is you can come underneath and you get that speed ring resting on your forearm. This gives you good leverage so that with your other hand, you can come in and really get that to lock in. That's super, super easy to give yourself a little extra strength and you're not sitting there trying to fight hard to grip items. Um, that is probably one of the best tips that I ever figured out back in the day. Broncolor uses a bayonet mounting system that has a small tall tab on top and a wide lower tab on the bottom. This allows it to spin freely all the way around so you can articulate which direction your speed ring is. At this point, uh, I would say you're gonna put your light on here. I'm a huge fan of you bring the light to the box, you don't take the box to the light. This makes it so you aren't trying to struggle with an awkward shaped item. Some soft boxes are really large and will give you some trouble. And the last thing you wanna do is hit that dome on the light and knock that off and break it and then have to figure out where to get a new dome at that point or call up your rental house or tell your photographer that that's broken. All things you wanna avoid. So at this point, I bring the light to the soft box and lock it in. And uh, Galvin, before we get too far there, yeah. there was a question in the uh, Q&A. I wanted to go ahead and see if we can address that. Uh, basically, the question was, I've got a couple of soft boxes that are a little bit hard to, uh, to put together and take apart because the rods are a little bit small. Do you have any tips on uh, maintaining that speed ring and keeping things good there? Absolutely. So uh, my... Silicone spray is uh, like a spray can with a silicone lubricant is probably one of the handiest things that you can have and you'll probably keep the same can throughout the bulk majority of your career. Uh, that can help. You take a little bit of that silicone spray and we're just gonna take this apart. This is where it's kind of a pain getting them apart. There we go. You take a little bit of that silicone spray and you put it on a rag and you get a little bit and then you take that rag and you run it in here, you run it on the ends of your rods. That can help, uh, you know, it lubricates it so it'll be a lot easier to get that in there. Um, I don't wanna tell you to take uh, aggressive tools to any speed rings or anything like that, but the, te the texture on the inside of the hole or the rod itself can sometimes be not as smooth as it could be and that could also make it harder to get that in and out. Um, it's up to you if you wanna get some 1600 grit sandpaper and just try to smooth that out a little bit. Uh, different softbox systems can be harder or easier depending on how they're set up and the size of the softbox. A really large softbox with brand new rods is gonna be pretty tough to mount. That's where that underhand tension where you can get as much leverage pushed in against your forearm and you can get some strength in there will allow you to really get that to lock in super easy. Uh, it's always taking a soft box apart that's the, I think the more difficult challenge. Um, is that? Yep, I think that's work? good that right? All right. Thank you very much. Hey, no problem. Okay, at this point, we're gonna set this aside and that brings me to another tip. Uh, you never wanna put your soft box, especially when you have your diffusion panel, straight down on the ground. Studios have a lot of dirt. If you're on location, there's dirt. And the last thing you wanna do is get your diffusion panel covered in dirt. 
uh, washing it will change, can change the color temperature of the output of the light. So keeping those things as fresh as possible is the goal. We're gonna set this aside and what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it on its side. Uh, the outside of these are made to be durable and made to be set down. So we're just gonna set this one aside here. We're gonna jump over and we're gonna talk about what's going on inside of the softbox. To do that, we're gonna jump over to this source here. All right, so this is a cross-cut side view of your average softbox. We have right here a diffusion panel, inner baffle, and then we have the outer baffle, which we will assemble on the light that I've got set up. And what happens to for, there's two types of light that come out of a softbox. There's the direct from the bulb, and then there is reflect. First, we're gonna talk about our direct light path here. As you can see, the light leaving the light goes and hits your first diffusion panel and spreads. And then that spread goes to your second diffusion panel and spreads even more. Uh, this is happening at every place that the light can and does hit, it's gonna spread that light. So that's how it softens. The indirect or bounce light is what your silver sides are doing. At every point on the inside of there, it is taking that light that is coming from the side and bouncing it towards that soft box. So what you're doing is effectively taking all the light that you can and putting it up front to create a lot of soft and even spread. So you end up with a lot of soft light coming out. And because of that, what you end up with is every place where you can pretty much see the white panel of the light you are getting light leaving. So it creates a very, very, very large pool of soft light that gradiates from the side to a warmer spot in the center. And we are going to jump back out here and let's finish setting up this soft box that we've got right here. So as you can see, we have no diffusion panels in here. Actually, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna take a picture with just this, because this is essentially a good demonstration of what hard light is. If you're in a pinch and you don't have a reflector, but you have a soft box, uh, one of the things you can do is you quickly pull out those diffusion panels and you are able to get a hard light source from a soft box. It's essentially a very large reflector. So we're gonna jump in here with our camera and our foam hat man. And we are gonna get a shot for us to look at what hard light looks like so that we can then skin it up with the diffusion. And oh, there we go. We're gonna be using the Scoro Pack 1600 and we're gonna meter. Meters are your friends. Today we're using a Speedmaster 858DU with the brown color transmitter built in. A really handy tool. Uh, it just, it gets you in the gets you in a spot where your first image isn't a rough one, you know what I mean? So we're gonna jump in here, get a meter reading, and we're showing 566. Six. We're gonna come down. And uh, just a quick correction there, Galvin, it is actually, it's a Sakonic meter. We wanna make sure that we're uh, oh, what did I all say? of our friends, uh, <laughs> all of our friends get, uh, get the proper credit there. Yep, yeah, Sakonic, my apologies, I, I, Sakonic Speedmaster 858DU with the brown color transmitter in it. We need to roll this to a 5.6. There we go, ISO 100. All right, we should be in the range and we should jump in and see a photo here. If everything is working right. And we were in the range, but we were a little hot. So we are gonna re-meter. Actually, we're gonna come down. I wanna and, say uh, a half so a So Galvin, if we can, we're, uh, we're seeing the, uh, the description of what a soft box does. Oh my gosh. There we go. Jeez. And we can do a little fancy picture in picture here. All right. We're gonna jump in. There we go. Well, that, yeah, that, that's, that's closer to what I think we want to see. And here we go. There we go. Now we're talking. So here is our representation of hard light. Uh, you're going to see this sharp cheek shadow. 
uh, when we zoom in here, we, we are going to look at, and you can see how even all of that styrofoam is picking up little hard shadows in there. That light isn't bending around and we're creating a hard shadow. The shadow behind styrofoam hat man, you can see has, this is the light reflecting off of each one of those surfaces inside of there to create that hard light effect, but you're seeing a very defined shadow. So what we're gonna do now is jump back out to this screen and we're gonna turn our pack off. Whenever you're working with a light and your face is staring right at it where it would flash, I always recommend turning the pack off. Uh, that way you don't get flashed. And uh, I actually once lost my color vision for 24 hours because of a, a blast of light. So protect yourself on set, work safe. All right. So we've got two levels of diffusion that are going in here. Um, on set, we've always referred to them as baffles or diffusion panels or diff. Uh, the inner baffle uses some snaps on this one, which is super easy to use and keeps it pulled nice and tight so it's not sagging around. Just snapping this in like that. And then we got an outer diffusion panel that Velcro's on. And when we put this on, we're gonna try to put it as even as possible on here. I like to pin the top first and get it kind of established and then go down to the bottom and match it up. And what you're trying to do is keep the shape of the softbox. So you want this to be pretty even. Again, we're trying to work with consistency and brown color with its purposeful design and eye for precision. You wanna make sure that you're not getting buckling on the side. You're not getting dips or anything cause that'll actually change that consistency that we talked about. We're gonna rotate this back onto set now. And we're in ver vertical orientation, which means more lights can be spread up and down. Uh, we'll do one like this and then we'll do one where we rotate it into the horizontal position. And you can clock it any way that you want, just knowing that you're throwing more of a wide spread and creating a larger source in the vertical or horizontal or in whatever direction. Uh, and we will now turn our pack on. We're gonna run another meter reading. And we're about to stop off now. We've lost a stop of light in softening and spreading it out. And of course, right. everybody, while and we I'm are uh, getting everything set up here for our demo, please feel free to ask us any questions. I see that there are a couple of questions that are queued up in our Q&A session that uh, we are definitely going to be getting to shortly. But if you have something that you want to know, let us know. We're happy to answer them. Yeah, please do. Questions are wonderful. And we're going to get a little bit more of this in here. All right, there we go. And coming into the computer. All right. So now we're going to look at our side by side here. On the left, we're going to see our hard light where we didn't use any of that diffusion and we're getting those hard shadows. And then on the right, you can see we've now unified and created a nice soft shadow effect. When we zoom in here, which we can shift zoom. And what we can see now is all of that shadow on the right cheek has now softened. We have spread that light. And since so much light is also coming out of the softbox, it's reflecting around and hitting everything in your studio, anything that it can hit and it's coming back to the subject. So you end up getting softer shadows and a lot more bounce and reflect light. I'm in a pretty small studio space here and I've got you know fairly low ceilings so that light can come and bounce all over the place and come back to the subject. Uh, but you can see pretty we have Obviously, a great question that there's actually, a software. Calvin, that, uh, oh, that comes yeah. in here as well. Um, why would you choose to have a more rectangular softbox versus uh, of the different uh, styles and uh, shapes? That's a great question. Um, it can be as something simple as superficial. Uh, for example, there have been some 
wonderful advertising photos taken that have been reproduced in 10 to 15 feet tall. So someone's face that large and their eye is this big. And inside of the eye, you can see the reflection of pretty much everything going on in the studio. Uh, some photographers prefer a round source highlight in the eye versus a square source. It seems more organic, it seems more natural and less uh, like a photo and more like reality. Um, the other thing too, round soft boxes or octaboxes, any of the boxes that have a spherical source or appearance have a tendency to create a very spherical pool of light. Like I said, it, it has a gradient where a, a soft box here kind of creates a oblong shape uh, the square boxes create an oblong shape where it's wider and then it does have a square type effect even though it's so soft that it's more spherical. Round sources have a smaller pool that's more defined and a lot of people think that shooting people uh, with organic shapes, uh, it's more attractive using an organic or a round shape to for the shadow cast, uh, for the highlight. It, they just believe that looks a little bit better. I think that's really subjective. Uh, the best thing I can say is try both. Uh, do a lot of experiments, tests. Uh, if you have a day for test shooting and before you do a big shoot, that's always good, or a pre-light day, uh, that's a great time to test out and find what your particular salt and pepper is for your shoot. Uh, I'm gonna jump back over here and we are going to take another picture, but this time we're gonna do it with the horizontal orientation. So we're gonna rotate our box the other way. Like I said, it can rotate all the way around, but sometimes you have to go the other direction. We are now widening this source out and we're gonna pop in and take another photo here. We're not gonna meet her because we did not change anything that would vary the intensity of the light. And we're gonna jump in. And we're gonna come back here. All right. So what we're looking at on the left here is our vertical orientation and on the right is our horizontal orientation. And right off the bat, I'm seeing a little bit more softness in here. And what we're talking about there is the size relationship to a subject, which uh, this is what will help you select a softbox for your job is the the distance or the size relationship to the subject. And I've got a diagram here that I will show you about size relationship to subject. And let me bring that up here. All right, so a soft box in this situation being very close and having a size relationship to a subject, say this is a person, uh, this is a person here right in front of your softbox. What you're getting is a lot of surface area emitting light in front of them. And what that ends up doing is those that light coming from all these different angles can reach all the way back here. Oh, come on. Anyway, uh, it can reach all the way back to almost behind their head there, which allows a lot of light to wrap around. That's what we talk about when we're talking about the light wrapping around a face. Uh, and that size perspective, or that, that size of the softbox makes it so that you're getting a lot of coverage on your subject. And alternatively, if you have a subject that's further away with the same size softbox, what ends up happening is that light doesn't have as much surface area in front of your subject so it can't wrap around as much and that light uh, is still soft on the subject but it is not reaching around and softening the shadows as much so uh, when you are deciding what softbox to shoot with whether you go with round square strip boxes uh, you want to know the distance to your subject if you're doing full body photos you're probably going to want a larger softbox something that can spread that light nice and you can keep it close so that you have more of that ability to wrap the light around and create that softness. Uh, if you're just doing headshot portraits and you wanna get a super soft photo, you come in with your, you know, even this size, which is pretty modest uh, compared to some of the larger boxes and you can get in close and you get this, like our, our styrofoam hat man, you get this relationship where the, on the right, where the size of the soft box, you're getting a lot of soft light that is wrapping around. 
And we can really work and amplify that by jumping in and pushing this soft box as close to subject as we can. And we're gonna move our sandbag here. Always use sandbags on set. Again, I, I like to say you always work safe. Always work safe. And probably gonna see our soft box in this just a little bit. Yeah, that's probably getting right in there, but we got enough to see our styrofoam hat man for a comparison. Now that we've moved the light uh, because of inverse square law, we're gonna have a lot more intensity. So we're gonna do a meter reading here. Yes, we gained almost a stop by moving it that much. So we're gonna come down a stop. And there we are. That is what we're looking for. Again, you're going to see the softbox in this. This is just for educational purposes. And jump into the computer. That's not the computer. And we're going to compare to this. All right. On the right, we are seeing the new image with the softbox very close. Uh, you can see that, especially on that front side, I could probably bring that down a third. One, two, three, and we're going to. The nice thing about brown color packs is you've got uh, tenth of stop incrementation, so you can really dial in your shot each time. And there we go. That's a little more what we want. All right, so what you're also seeing too is we've cast a larger shadow. That light has a lot more effect on the area to the left of Styrofoam Hat Man, but we are getting some softer shadows because of that physical relationship. Uh, to compare that, we're going to pull this soft box all the way back to as far as my tiny little garage studio will let us. And get our sandbag back on there. And we're going to re-meter because we've done it. We've changed our intensity by moving it back. Yes, we did. And oh yeah, a lot. And a half. Five, and that'll be in that same zone of exposure that we like and we want. Just to reiterate, questions are always good. Anybody want to have any questions answered, please, please ask. And here we go. And here is further away. And if we could see your screen, Galvin, that would be wonderful oh, there. There we go. <laughs> and we do have a question, but uh, I'm going to hold off for just a minute because it's going to be the next thing that we're going to cover. Oh, okay, cool. All right. So you can see on the right, we now have, you know, we're over here. We were so close. Light wasn't really wrapping around. The camera kind of prevented from getting into there. But further away, we've now really kind of flattened out. We do have a nice highlight zone that no shadows consistent. Uh, again, playing with the distances and stuff like that and practice, try large soft boxes, try small soft boxes, try everything you can. Uh, the next thing I would like to talk about uh, with soft boxes is controlling the light. We've talked Wonderful. about how... Before we oh. do that, um, oh, we okay. do have a question in the audience here. What would be the first soft box you would recommend someone start with? Ooh, that's a fantastic question. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I would stay away from strip boxes. Uh, I consider those more effects or single purpose or something to that. So uh, right now the 60 to 100, I've been really enjoying using great for mid-sized portraits. You can pull it back and you can get some more direct full body. Uh, something in the two foot by three foot range will be a real workhorse. It'll be something that you can use all the time. Also look for a soft box. I do recommend the brown color. There are accessories that can help you control the light and uh, they're just a, a really robust and excellent soft box to use. Uh, but about the two by three range would be something that I would say is a good starting point, a good workhorse. Uh, if you know you're gonna be doing full body, uh, the, what is it? The three foot by four foot 
is good uh, to, to start working with more full body uh, and you don't have to be as far away uh, just to, you know, finding those out. Octa boxes are great. Uh, getting a nice round Octa that's 48 inches wide, so four feet, that's going to be, it's a big box. It's a big source, but it will have a lot of usage. Um, if you can, I mean, find your local rental house, see what they have, try three different soft boxes. That would be my, that would be my recommendation just to figure it out. Uh, it all depends on the circumstances. Again, how wide you want that source in relation to the subject. I hope Wonderful. that kind of helps you. a little bit. <laughs> and now, uh, so I guess now we have a, a nice little segue into a question that we had earlier in the uh, presentation here. Aside from moving your softbox, what other things can you do to modify the lights that are uh, coming out of the light quality? Absolutely. So uh, as we said, a softbox diffuses that light and creates a giant spherical soft gradient of light. And that light is going everywhere. It's going everywhere in your studio. It's hitting the ceiling. It's hitting the floor. It's bouncing everywhere. How do you start to control that? Light shaping and knowing what your light is doing is very important. And the first way that I think to do that is by using a grid. And we can pull one of those out here. Again, I'm going to turn my light off. And we are actually going to move this light back in a little bit. We're going to go back into the vertical orientation with it. And I'm going to get that a little bit closer to camera. I think the effect will be a little bit more dramatic. Um, when I'm working on set and I've got the bag that the modifier comes in, usually we have all of the accessories for that modifier in the bag with it. I always hang it from the light that the modifier is on. This way I don't have to go to any equipment room or anything to get any of my modifiers or my accessories for this light. It's always right here with the light on the stand. It's uh, kind of like a sandbag, you know, you always have it on the stand. All right, a grid. Uh, grid, also known as egg crate or crate, uh, is a tool. As you can see, it is a bunch of squares, just like a grid. And you can see as you rotate, you're not seeing the light or seeing through it. And this does the same thing on the soft box, which I'm going to rotate here. Actually, we're going to take a shot of this before so that we can have a relationship to represent. I did move that. So we're going to once again, Sekonic meter. And I did myself a favor and didn't flash. So I turned the pack off. <laughs> All right, there we go. We're in five, six, nine, a little too intense. Still. All right, and we're going to go up a half a stop just to taste. There we go. That's where I want it. And Styrofoam Hat Man is ready for his close up. All right. And that is our for reference. Now we're gonna put our softbox on. Again, I turn the pack off because I'm working with the light. Uh, rotate just past camera here. This is not ideal working with this so close to the camera, but in situations you gotta work with what you got. And you work slowly, precisely, and you don't break stuff. That's the best thing an assistant can do. All right, I'm gonna Velcro this on here just like I did and right over the outer baffle. Uh, again, as I mentioned, you wanna be as purposeful with this as you possibly can. I usually pin the top and then I go to the bottom and then I affix the sides. Uh, again, you wanna maintain the shape of the soft box. Here we go. All right, now what can you see? Okay, you can see the white part of the outer baffle. You can see from this angle just a little bit. So you can already see in this region, the light that's normally bouncing in that direction has been cut off by the crate or grid. And we're rotate past camera and we're gonna go right to Styrofoam Hat Man. 
and organize it. We're gonna turn our pack on. The grid loses a little bit of light, so we're gonna re-meter here. Yep, we lost about a half. And that's just because it's cutting off some of that ancillary bounce and making it so that it is not going in as many directions. You're also losing a lot of that reflect light coming in from your surrounding areas. So let us take that picture. All right, and we're gonna jump in here. Oops, there we go. All right, so on the left here is our first shot without the grid. Maybe if we do this with a wide shot, but what you can see is there's a little bit more vignetting happening over here on the right hand side. We've now controlled that pool and it does have more intensity in this general region right here. Uh, if I pan this a little bit to the right, we can focus that more and we're just getting a very narrower version, that same sort of gradient from the edge to more intense in the center to the gradient to the edge and consistent, we've now reduced that and we're controlling the direct amount of light. Uh, that is probably one of the best ways and first ways to start controlling the softbox light. Uh, if you wanna really cut things off, use a flag uh, next to or over or around your softbox to reduce the spread of light into places that you don't want it. Uh, Braun Color makes a really cool accessory called the Edge Mask, which we are going to use right now. Uh, this is a really fun accessory that turns your two foot by three foot softbox that's one source into about what feels like four sources. So we're going to take off, sorry about the Velcro noise. This and we're gonna put this away again. I try to put everything away and fold everything up purposefully. You wanna maintain your gear over the course of time. So I just try to keep it so that things are put away nicely. So the next time it's not tangled or in any way damaged. So and, uh, this. Galvin, while we're, while we're setting up that, before we set up that edge mask, uh, we do have another question from the chat. Uh, how is the best way to store your softbox accessories uh, as you are taking them apart and putting them together again? Oh, good question. Uh, well, softboxes, uh, the actual softbox itself, I can use this one right here. Uh, when we take this apart, oh, I got to use my own tension technique on this. All right. As you take them apart, what I like to do, speed rings, uh, brown color, when they sell out, sell one of them comes with a little bag. This is an easy way to store your speed rings. Uh, when you're working, you don't necessarily have to always go back to the bag, but I at least put it with the bag. The softbox itself, I like to, again, like I said, everything you wanna be purposeful. You don't just slam things together. I like to make sure that I've got my softbox fairly folded, that everything isn't crumpled, cracked, creased. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to store them with the baffles in or the baffles out. Um, there's a lot of theories both ways. And if you're an assistant, ask your photographer how you how they would like to have it stored. Uh, a lot of them don't care. Some of them really do care. That's just a communication thing. Uh, all of this working on set and working as an assistant, it works with communication. So always ask. Don't just assume. If you set up the soft box and everything was built up in there, it's a pretty good bet that they want it in there. Uh, but it never hurts to ask, especially the first time you're working for them. Then I'll do either a roll or a fold, and then that can store away inside of the bag. Uh, then I can put my diffusion panels in there as well. Accessories, a lot of them, like the edge mask, come with a bag uh, that you can store those in. Uh, there is a lot of talk and theory. I'm going to strip this off. Sorry about the Velcro. How to store your diff panels or your baffles. Uh, I've heard a lot of people who want them to be 
meticulously folded. I've also heard people say you just crumple them up. The two different theories is by folding, you maintain just a few creases and you maximize that soft surface area. By crumpling, you create a lot of micro creases in there that even out the light within it. Uh, I've worked on different sets and large silks, like 20 foot silks and stuff. Uh, I've seen both ways stored. Like a silk will generally be crumpled up and put into a bag. Uh, whereas a large flat, like an ultra bounce, will be folded appropriately. Uh, again, this is one of those things, talk to your photographer how they want it to be stored. Um, personally, I can't say as I've seen a drastic difference in either one. My main concern is not getting this dirty or on the floor. So I'll generally just try to, again, being purposeful and consistent, put that into the bag there. Uh, I used to carry one gallon Ziploc bags and sometimes I'd offer one to the photographer they wanted to have uh, their diff panels stored in a bag. Just one of those little extra things. So we're gonna jump back to, oh, I, again, I'll, I mentioned it before, I always hang the bag for the soft box that I'm using on the stand that it's on. And inside of there, I put my accessories for that light. So usually the grid, uh, any like a strip mask or any of the extra accessories. If you're choosing to not use an outer baffle or not use an inner baffle, that's where you can store it, but you have it should you need it. Uh, again, a lot of times changes have to be made in the middle of a shoot. And the last thing you wanna do is have to run into where you have all your equipment stored when you could have it right there by the light. It just helps you work quicker and more methodical and keeps you from having to rush and run to another space on set because we never run on set. And the whole goal is to be work safe, work well, work fun. All right. Again, we're pinning this in, maintaining the shape of the softbox. You don't want to do it where the softbox is getting extra shape to it for any reason. And Velcro and makes a, it kind a of quick fun sometimes. Comment from the chat. Uh, John in the chat says. Yes. Uh, you're doing it right. Do the setup and store the same way every time. So that's a, that's a great uh, little tip yes. there as well. Uh, also, because we uh, kind of interrupted with a question there, what is this accessory called and, and, and when, how, how does it work? Oh, absolutely. I'm going to do one more little set tip. When you're using lights, you'll oftentimes have the globe cap, the protector cap. I always take these and put them back into whatever the storage of the light itself is. Uh, put the cap for the light in the bag for the light. Just helps you keep track of those. A lot of people will stack them up and then put them somewhere and then all of a sudden you've got four lights that you don't have a cap for. Now, jumping back into what we're talking about, this interesting softbox cover, this accessory, is called the Edge Mask. And what it was designed for, and we'll do this in a second, is to put your subject in front of this and shoot this towards the camera. But I've also found that it has a really nice effect of evening out the light because effectively all, what, all that direct light that you get that comes out through the center and creates the hot spot now is being killed by this and you now have almost a ring light but a square ring light effect and it evens out and creates a very even lighting situation. So first, just to demonstrate that, we're going to take this and we're going to get our camera back in here, frame it up on Styrofoam Hat Man. Somebody should give Styrofoam Hat Man a better name than Styrofoam Hat Man. If anybody's got any ideas, let us know. All right. You know what? I didn't meet her. I, uh, I failed my own methodology there and I got an underexposed photo. We're gonna jump back in and do the meter. Yeah, cause we lost uh, almost a full stop there. Coming back over here. Ooh, more than. And walking the long way around. There we go. Now we're, yeah, two stops. All right, and we will take this photo now. And 
Here is our, all right, so on the left is our soft box with the grid. So we are getting a tighter pool of light in there, but we are getting some harder shadows, but you can see that vignette. Now that we're using the edge mask, that center isn't as hot and it's more even across the front because you've reduced that hot spot of the light coming through the center here. And you get a nice even and controllable gradient. That's cool. But what we're going to do now is shoot the subject on that photo as this mask was, as the edge mask was designed for. And this is a really cool effect. We're going to swap the styrofoam hat man over here. And we're going to move this light into his spot. And of course, while Galvin is setting up here, we're uh, getting ready to take things in for a landing, but that doesn't mean that the fun has to stop. If you guys have any questions, again, please let us know. We are happy to uh, answer those for you here. And if we missed anything during the presentation, again, feel free to uh, like, follow, subscribe, and uh, ask us some questions on social media, at Braun Color USA. Absolutely. All right, we're gonna make Styrofoam Hat Man a little taller. All right, and we're gonna bring him a little bit forward. Next time we work with subjects that can move themselves. All right, and we're gonna meet her. This time we're gonna meet her from camera we're at a four and i'm gonna give it one let's give it a half up because i want it to be over mid gray on there and let's fire this off and see what drama we have created and Boom. All right. So what we've done is we've created from one light source the effect of four lights. You can see we've got on the left here a beam, over here a beam, one above, one below. We're getting some nice edge highlighting all the way around here. You can also see a lot of the reflect light and ambient light from my lighting for the webinar is cascading and filling in. Let's bet we can do a little, we'll do one without this extra lights on here and we'll see how that looks. There we go. That's a little more dramatic, less spill light. I could have also upped the intensity of the strobe and then stopped down as well to create the, you know, kill the light, ambient light that's in the room but I kind of like that sort of thing. Uh, we can jump back out here. Uh, Blake, do we have enough time to add another light or are we at kind of a more question and answer phase? Please let me know. I think we are ready to come in for a landing here, but uh, okay. if, then give, us, give us a little bit more time for some questions. Uh, again, if anybody has them, let us know. Otherwise, uh, we will let Galvin bring in another light here and we will... Uh, get everybody right. on their way. So what I'm thinking here is we've got our nice, cool, interesting backlight. Now what I want to do is create a little bit of interesting highlight on the front. And I'm thinking about using a strip light here, a strip bank, which I've got a light there. I got a sandbag ready for when we knot it up. Always use sandbags for it, friends. Always use sandbags. Um, whether you're in the studio or you're, you know, on location, uh, it's just a, a really important thing to always have your gear supported and protected. Soft boxes are generally large and it won't take much wind to pick them up a bit and then knock them over. So always use a sandbag. It's literally the cheapest way to safety. 
Again, using the ring, has the red markers on it. This strip box has red tabs on it. We're just gonna key this in like that. Move some of this out of the way. And uh, while we're setting up here, I can go ahead as well and I will get uh, get a little bit of housekeeping taken care of so that we can end on a, on a nice fancy note here. Uh, definitely we want to thank everybody for attending today. We appreciate that uh, you took some time out of your afternoon to, uh, to listen to us talk about softboxes today. Uh, if you like what you heard, please feel free to join us again next month on August 25th where we're going to be talking all things Scoro Pack. So uh, the pack that Galvin has been using here today, we're going to talk about uh, how to properly set up, how to use it, and uh, some helpful tips as well uh, for both photographers and assistants. So Also about how on. quick and easy they are. You got to mention how they are quick to set up and they are easy to use. You don't have to be a 10-year veteran of assisting or shooting to know how quickly to set this up. So anyway, I'm bringing the light to the softbox. As I mentioned earlier, it's a lot easier to control the mounting, which then we've got that on there. Wonderful. And then uh, we have one final question in the chat that I think would be a, a great one to kind of answer now as we're setting up. Why is brawn color better than any other? Ooh, that is a fun question. I have probably a solid hour of reasons that I could talk about to do that, but right off the bat, I'm going to say consistency. And I mentioned earlier that purposeful design. So their products work how they're supposed to work. Uh, they are designed to work. And then uh, consistency being, if I have this soft box or I have a copy of this soft box, I know what it's gonna do. Uh, consistency being, I can trust that the product is gonna perform on set. Uh, in all of the years that I have been working with Broncolor, I've never gotten to set and had a pack not perform. I've never had a head fry. I've never had any sort of glitches like that. Uh, I believe there was a statistic and I think one of the Brom color people can let me know about something that it repairs. The average age of something in repair is like eight years old, which is amazing. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. They make these things so well that you just can't, I, I don't think there's many things that could compare. That's a personal opinion, uh, but yeah, uh, consistency and that precision. I can count on the light doing what it's supposed to do, and I can count on the product delivering what it's supposed to deliver. All right, we can hot swap and we're gonna go in. I wanna use a little bit of hard light from this strip box just to highlight Styrofoam Hat Man. So we're gonna try this at the bottom of the pack and see what we get. This is just kind of being creative and being fun right now. Oh, too much, too much. That's probably still gonna be too much. This is what I mean by too much. We have blasted him. So we're gonna actually have to add some diffusion in there. Where did I put my bag? Right next to the stand. We're gonna put our baffles in it, both baffles. And I'm gonna stop this pack so that I can add these baffles. Uh, again, the system is the same. There's not variation in how everything works. So I'm using a strip bank now, which casts a wider throw up and down than it does left to right or more throw on the vertical in this configuration. And you get pretty good at setting these up over the course of time. It doesn't take much. But again, I always try to say be purposeful with your work. Don't rush. And always be safe. You always want to be able to go to work on set the next day too. So you got to work for safety. 
All right, we've got that set up. And we're going to have it cranked a little bit more to the left. So we're just spilling more light from the side. A proximity thing. A soft box, like I said, the other cool thing. Oh, I didn't. I got to turn my pack back on. The other cool thing about a soft box. There we go. Since the light goes everywhere. Right now, I'm standing far off to the side of this soft box, but I can still see that diffusion panel. Because you can see that, you know that light is going to come through that diffusion panel and hit you. So you have almost 180 degrees, maybe 160 degrees worth of light leaving that soft box. And the light that's coming in on the edges, kind of in my area, is sometimes pretty interesting. So try turning your soft boxes around so it's almost not even hitting your subject and get your levels and try something like that. Because a little interesting sliver of light from the soft box can be interesting. Uh, we're gonna jump over two. And now that we've, here we go. That's something that's interesting. Come on, let's do this one. So on the left is that shot that we took where it was just the free mask or the edge mask, not the free mask, the edge mask. Uh, just catching those highlights and just doing what it's doing as like a highlight all the way around. And then we've added a little bit of front light. It's still a little bit too intense, but I'm at the bottom of the pack. So I do have some options. I can change my camera settings. So let's come up on, I'm going to go two stops on there. And then we're going to go two stops, F8, and 11. There we are. Ooh, sounds bigger. Big pops. Yeah, let's see what that looks like. There we go. That's more what I want. There we go. So awesome. now we're just getting a little bit of highlight there. Anyway, this is just the last few minutes here have been just kind of a creative, fun way to play with what is essentially two soft boxes and one accessory. You can do a lot with them. You can really like try shooting them a normal softbox behind subject. It creates a nice cascade. There's a lot you can do. Uh, you can even shoot them without any of the diffusion and use them as just a reflector. There's so many options. It's a very versatile tool. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you very much, Galvin. And thank you to all of our audience today. We've had some great questions and we hope that we were able to get those all answered for you as best that we can. And again, I just want to remind you on Wednesday, August 25th, same time, we're going to be talking all things Scoro Pack. So without further ado, thanks everybody and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.